difficulty there. Okay. Um, I'm uh, Duncan Ellison. Um, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, and thank you for taking the uh, the time to uh, to join us in these difficult circumstances. Um, um, I'm the business development manager for In Hand Networks in the uh, in the UK. Welcome to this webinar on our IR600 series uh, products. Over the next 20 minutes or so, uh, we're going to introduce you to the, the uh, IR600 series. We'll go over what models are available, look at some specific features, and how some actual customers are using the IR600. Finally, we'll end up by answering any questions you might have. Um, if you have the chat window open, uh, I can see some of you have already raised the flag to say you couldn't hear. Um, please type your questions as you, as you go along and, and we'll try to pick them up at the end. But first, for those of you who aren't really familiar with us, uh, I'd like to spend just a few moments to bring you up to speed with, uh, with who we are. Inhan was founded in 2001 and we've grown to be one of the largest manufacturers of industrial communications equipment. We are suppliers to the state grid of China, where we've got over a million of our modem uh, uh, devices in operation managing the grid. We are global partners with people like Rockwell and Schneider, and we have a, a blue chip customer base with names like Siemens, ABB, and, uh, and RWE. And most recently, uh, we have just completed building of our new 120,000 square foot uh, factory in Shaoxing Pro province. And um, the, the, uh, the last month, we just became listed on the SSE star market, which is the Shanghai equivalent of the NASDAQ. We're a, a strong and, and growing business with over 30% of our people working in research and development and uh, our products are designed to work globally. Uh, to support that, uh, we have employees right around the world, uh, including the US, UK, France and, and Germany, as well as uh, China and the APAC region, region of course. Uh, all our production facilities work within an ISO 9000 regime and all the products have appropriate certifications for the territory that they're designed for, including CE marking, FCC, uh, ROHOS, and even E marking for those vehicle based products. Uh, and to back that up, our products come with great technical support and a, and a three year warranty. We, we actually offer a wide range of products from basic cellular modems through to high-end edge computing gateways. Um, and we also manufacture industrial switches and media converters, which are not shown on this slide, as well as industrial PCs that are mainly used in vending machines. But to, today, uh, we're gonna concentrate on the InRouter 600 range of industrial cellular routers, which sit just above the NDTU products and just below our in-route to 900 high-end uh, router products. These are genuine tough industrial grade products, uh, but due to the volume we produce, they're available at a very cost-effective price and actually cover the majority of cellular uh, connected applications. The, the in-route to 600 is actually our most popular unit. The Inroot uh, 600 comes in two basic model types. The Inroot uh, 611, which has just one Ethernet port and is designed to provide reliable, low cost connections for applications like ATM machines and, and point of sale terminals. And we also have the Inroot 615, its bigger brother which has five ethernet ports uh, and is more suited to true industrial applications like metering and uh, machine controls and so on. So let's have a look at the, the common features of, of both devices. Well, they both have a rugged industrial design with a wide temperature range. Um, they have up to CAT4 LTE capability and uh, optional Wi-Fi. You, you specify Wi-Fi at, uh, at ordering time or not. 
Um, and the Wi-Fi can be configured both as an access point or a client. So it can connect to a network or it can provide a network either way. Because of their industrial heritage, they've got exceptionally rugged power supply circuits. Um, and uh, they also provide uh, uh, one and a half thousand um, uh, kilovolt protection on the ethernet uh, interfaces as well. So they're pretty, pretty rugged devices. Um, they both feature OpenVPN and uh, IPsec VPNs out of the box. Uh, and both uh, benefit um, from our free of charge management platform device manager, but we'll talk more about that later. Um, let's look a little closer at the IR611 specifically. Um, externally, it's a no frills product designed to do a job. It's got one uh, ethernet port. Um, so I can just bring up my little laser pointer. So we have uh, one uh, ethernet port um, and it has one serial port. The serial port you can specify to be RS-232 or RS-485 so that you can connect directly to metering and uh, other industrial equipment. Comes in a tough metal uh, enclosure uh, with optional wall mounts, um, but the IR611 doesn't feature a DIN rail mount. It has dual Wi-Fi uh, antennas for range, uh, and it also has dual um, LTE cellular antennas for, uh, for coverage, for better coverage. It, it also has a, a, an unusually wide temperature range of minus 20 to plus 70 degrees uh, C. And uh, it also features a, a pluggable DC power connector uh, with a very wide range input from 9 to 26 volts. So it's ideal for where um, you want to plug into a, an existing DC power supply. Um, it's perfect for if you're powering this thing from, say, solar panels, um, because it can take such a wide um, voltage input. Now let's have a, a look at its bigger brother, the, uh, the IR615. In, in addition to the features on the uh, IR611, it's got five Ethernet ports. Here, I'm pointing them out. Uh, it has um, four LAN ports and one LAN, uh, sorry, one WAN port and four LAN ports. Um, it also has um, an industrial type uh, terminal block connection, uh, 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 this green Phoenix connection um, for both power and the two serial ports. You can see the, the labels on the, uh, on the uh, enclosure there. Um, you can specify one of these uh, ports to be RS-485 again, so ideal for connecting to Modbus type sensors and, and other uh, industrial equipment. The um, IR615 also has uh, a higher level EMC rating, um, uh, level three EMC rating. Um, you'll find a lot of these uh, devices in places like electricity substations, um, where they're unaffected by, uh, by interference from uh, electrical equipment. Um, and um, uh, you can see here, um, they come as standard with a, uh, with a DIN rail mount uh, on the back, which is uh, ideal because that way, uh, once it's installed in the, in the cabinet, uh, you've got full access to the front where you can plug the ethernet cables and the top where you can plug in the power and the, uh, the antennas. The, uh, as I'm just pointing out now, uh, the uh, IR615 also has a dual SIM option uh, this is this is option. You have to specify it uh, when you when you order the product, um, but only available in the uh, European market. Okay, but let's uh, that's that's the physical boxes. But let's turn our attention to what's inside the units. Um, we support up to Cat four LTE. Um, but in most IoT applications, it's not the speed uh, as much as uh, the reliability that, uh, that concerns people. Um, the software itself has multiple levels of link failure detection uh, and recovery. 
ranging from um, being able to ping a server and if uh, so many responses uh, don't come back we can uh, restart the, uh, the, the link um, to uh, quite sophisticated VRRP um, networks where you can uh, um, put this device on the same LAN as say a Cisco router uh, and if the Cisco fails uh, our product will know about that and uh, automatically take over from the uh, from the Cisco so ideal for um, for uh, lands uh, uh, that, that just cannot uh, be disconnected for for any reason um, unusually we also have a physical uh, hardware watchdog that will reboot the unit if the software hangs up for any reason so e even if there's a software glitch uh, eventually the uh, the unit will realize that and it will uh, reboot itself So um, these days, we know that hackers are trying to uh, target industrial applications as well as commercial ones. Uh, so it's important to deploy communications products which support the, the, the very highest levels of uh, security. Both the IR611 uh, and the um, IR615 uh, support the widest range of uh, industry standard measures, including both uh, OpenVPN and uh, IPsec uh, VPN clients, um, which enables you to set up secure tunnels using normal internet SIMs rather than expensive M2M ones. Uh, in, a, in addition, uh, we, we also support L2TP and point-to-point -point tunneling protocol, although we don't uh, generally recommend those for anything other than legacy networks as there are known security issues with them. Um, this, the uh, 600 series has great firewall credentials too. Uh, they support uh, stateful packet inspection, packet filtering, and access control lists, which would be uh, very familiar to anybody with a, a Cisco security background. Um, and uh, access wise, uh, we support uh, SSH connections uh, to the uh, command line as well as uh, SSL connections to the web uh, interface, um, making sure that if you remotely connect to these units for management purposes, your messages are not going to be uh, uh, eavesdropped. And finally, it doesn't really matter how many features a router has if you can't effectively manage them once they've uh, been deployed in the field. Uh, it's the, in the nature of these things that they get deployed very geographically widely. And whilst you might be able to manage uh, a, a fleet of uh, communications devices when you have five or 10 or 20, you can manage those relatively easily on a spreadsheet. Um, but once you get beyond that, it becomes a full-time management task um uh, we uh we have um a nice uh easy to use web configuration because for some users this is something that they're only going to use occasionally so we've tried to make that as easy as possible um but we also support command line access um for the gurus and, and, and the technical people who want a shorthand way to configure the units um and uh, you could also use that to configure these units via a scripting tool um, but as I said, um, uh, um, uh, the, uh, um, the, the, uh, the, the issue that a lot of people have um, is uh, setting up these uh, devices and then managing them. Um, one basic issue that a lot of users struggle with is setting the APN details to connect to the network. Um, uh, provided the network supports it, the IR600 will automatically negotiate the correct APN with the network. Um, of course, if you've got a special uh, private a APN, you, you'll need to set that, uh, that, that yourself. Um, and uh, really, I've saved the, the best to last. E even our low-end products like the IR600 uh, series benefit from our cloud-based remote management platform. Um, meaning that you can support thousands of these devices in the field uh, easily. Um, device manager can help you check that the fleet is uh, online and send new configurations on a scheduled basis uh, to them. Um, see see what ones have, have an issue, 
um, change configurations all all remotely. Um, and uh, unlike most of our competitors, we provide device manager completely free, and that's uh, that's a nice change. Staying with networking. Some of our customers simply use the IR600 products as a, as a, just as a simple gateway to get to the internet. Uh, and that's, that's pretty easy to set up. But what if your application is a little more challenging than that? Let's say you want to use it as part of a communication system to manage and control critical things like uh, uh, factory machinery remotely. You, you've got a number of challenges. First off, this is probably not your day job. Configuring VPNs and firewalls and setting up IP subnets is pretty complicated stuff. And uh, especially if you don't have an IT department on hand to, to assist you. Um, then there's the uh, security aspect. Um, bad guys are increasingly targeting things rather than people because they know there are more security holes uh, there. Um, so uh, to, to help with that, uh, Enhance created the, uh, the InConnect service. Uh, simply put, uh, in, uh, in Connect uh, allows you to have the router automatically connect uh, via a VPN to our cloud servers. The cloud servers, they act like a, uh, a switchboard to allow all the devices behind the router to be able to see each other as though they were all on one giant local area network. Um, there's, um, there's just an option uh, that you need to turn on on the router. Uh, you need uh, an, interconnect, uh, an InConnect account with us. That's all. You don't even need special M2M SIM cards to do this. Just regular ones will, will, will do. And uh, since we take care of all the security setup, you don't have to concern yourself with, uh, with, with that. Um, underneath the hood, we're using OpenVPN to, uh, to, to connect these, uh, these things together. So where would you use this? Uh, well, uh, InConnect would come, in, would come into its own where you have a, a remote system with multiple devices on the LAN and you want to access them from, from hundreds of miles away on your laptop. Um, the site connects to InConnect via the router. Your laptop connects to InConnect via the internet. Um, and instantly the two are bridged together so that from the user's point of view, it would actually look something like, uh, like this. So uh, here, the, the maintenance engineer on the right um, uh, uh, sees that the, uh, the factory equipment that's, uh, that's on the left, that's connected behind the, uh, uh, the, the this case, it's an IR615, uh, as though they were actually in the factory, um, that, uh, as though he's actually sitting in the factory. They all appear to be on one, um, uh, one giant land. And uh, best of all, to try and help during this uh, current uh, virus outbreak, uh, we're waiving all our charges for InConnect until the end of June so that you can use this service with uh, no obligation and uh, no charges. So, so now I'd like to hand over to uh, Zilla Lee, our Europe Tech Support Specialist, and, and she will uh, talk to you about some of the customer applications and real world uh, applications that we have for this uh, uh, for this product. Um, Zilla, can you come in now? Yeah. Can everybody hear me? This is Zilla. Yep, we can hear you. Yeah, okay. Without further ado, let's move on to success stories and applications. Next slide, please, Duncan. Okay, um, uh, there, there we go. Okay, let's move on to success stories and applications. I know this part is what you're really interested in like what kind of market segments we're going after, which ones we've been seeing success. As for commercial, including, okay, this part is from our success story that we've had. First, I'll talk about Valib. And the bike sharing service industry is one of the heavily growing markets globally. 
not only in Paris, but only in other parts of Europe and of the world, like Asia. There is an IPC inside the unattended relief station, which needs connectivity. Plus, they have a car reader or some types of apps or system where they can, where they need that device communicating. IR615 with cellular and five Ethernet ports can perfectly do that. The IR611 615 is able to provide them with a safe VPN terminal between the IPC and their data center to ensure the financial security. And they don't have to worry about the temperature range vibration, which can create a real challenge for a commercial router in such an outdoor environment. Volib can also manage the routers through the device manager, a free cloud platform provided by InHand. So if there is a network failure or if something goes down, they can immediately get to notice where and when the problem lies. And next. Next slide, please, Duncan. Okay, in the retail space, we actually work with a company called Checkpoint out of UK. And they are providing security cameras and network infrastructure for H&M a retailer for different types of clothing. And we are able to provide the connectivity for the cameras in different areas of their stores. We provide that 4G LTE connection so that they don't have to deal with the local networking within the store. With the development of big data or IoT, H&M would also like to apply the latest technologies and boost their business. By installing cameras that count visitors in different areas of the store, they can track how many people come in the store during different seasonal promotion or which area is the most popular. The IR615 can send the real data, real time data back to the data center, which can help them promote their sales and do marketing. Next slide, please, Duncan. In a lot of places where ATMs are located, no Wi-Fi or Ethernet connection is available. Having the wireless ability, the 611 can provide secure VPN terminals for transactional data. Worldwide, we provided more than 30,000 installations for these ATMs. Having the auto recovery as a key component, if your ATM doesn't have a network connection, then it's doing no business. You'll make no money from that machine. And then having the ability to do remote diagnostic, data flow monitoring. The smart ATM platform is best really for managing the downstream devices like your ATMs. So knowing when the data is increasing, when there is an issue, being able to send technicians to that location knowing exactly where the problem lies. That's very important to ATM operators. Next, please. Duncan, next slide. Yes, in the metering area. Our in router 600 series is also stands out. Also, our group partner Schneider Electric. We've been partners for a while, working with them on power metering. They're moving the data back to their monitoring system, and they typically like to choose 4G or 3G, depending on location, because they are not relying on the actual internet access and the network within the location. The high reliability really ensures 24 seven connection with a power monitoring system over thousands of meters away. So if you are doing power monitoring or metering for more efficiency in a factory, the 600 series is really a good option. 
Next slide, Duncan. And about the Bosch car service, it's a very good example of a network that's geographically spaced out in many different locations. Having a product with a remote management access, you can do all your configurations and upgrading without having to send teams over a very large regional area that provide a lot of benefits. And then in this instance, Bosch chose cellular as their primary connectivity because they are using the POS controller for receiving payment and then pushing it back to their service, service center. So they need some kind of secure connection, which of course our 611 can provide. And also they can check the flow rate on our device manager. Not only managing the devices becomes easier, but also they don't have to replace them frequently. That's because our industrial routers have reliability. Even if it's not in an industrial environment, you're going to see a much longer life cycle. And for more applications, Duncan, next slide. So now we kind of touch some of our customer base and what we already done. And then we'll move on a little bit to more applications. Another thing which I'm sure a lot of guys have seen out there is digital signage. It has been widely used in the office building and shopping mall and airports. Self pickup and drop off lockers is another interesting application. I've been told about them internationally over the last few years. You have a big metropolitan area people are living inside. High rise apartment complexes. So delivering packages and mails is always a kind of pain. So this kind of application really bring a lot of convenience to people. And our 600 series does play an important role. Don't just focus on the service station like car washes, Laundromats, the 600 series can be used within different types of retail stores and can be used anywhere, whether it's unattended or in some cases unattended, like the unmanned convenience stores and coffee machines. These are different from the micro markets in our neighborhood. And Router 600 series is our entry level product. It's simple to use, easy to manage and can be used in many scenarios. And we got a lot to talk about regarding the applications. So if you have any questions, just feel free to ask. You can type on the screen. Okay, thanks. Uh, thank, thanks Zilla, Hope, hopefully you can hear me again. It's Duncan here again. Um, uh, if you, uh, I'm just watching uh, um, the, the, the chat room here. Um, I'm not seeing any questions, but if you if you have any uh, any, any questions, um, then then just uh, just type them now, and uh, uh, we'll see. Oh, okay, uh, I can see a couple coming up uh, up here. Um, so um, uh, Ankita asks which protocol to use uh, for, for for Schneider. Um, uh, let me see. Um, um, I'm I'm not I'm not uh, up to speed fully with that. I, I don't know, Zilla. Uh, can um, can you answer that, or, or do we need to get back to uh, Ankita about that? Okay. Um, let 
it's, let me just uh, let me just check. I'm still uh, still online. Okay. Um, so uh, let, let me just run through uh, through some of the questions that I've seen here. Um, which uh, which LTE band is is supported? Um, uh, well, it's, it's a little difficult to just just answer uh, off the bat. It depends on the uh, on the model and the um, uh, the location. Um, we, we have a number of different models for for different locations, uh, and these days um, uh, the LTE bands are very uh, uh, are very fragmented. Um, so um, usually it, it's 10 or more different um, bands that are covered by each model. Um, we, can, uh, we can come back to you on that and give you some, uh, uh, some, some more details on, on which, which bands are supported, but, but pretty much all of them, they're, they're, these are designed as, uh, uh, as global uh, units. Um, uh, SDN network, um, I think, I think we're probably uh, going to have to, um, from, from Lewis, uh, I think we're going to have to come back um, to you on that one. Um, uh, energy monitoring, the connection uh, between um, Schneider software. Um, uh, generally, that, that's, that's achieved by, by uh, um, Mobbus. Um, so um, most of our products, uh, the 600 in included, natively knows how to uh, how to connect to Modbus um, devices, um, and uh, uh, and um, uh, onward send that up to the cloud. Um, uh, uh, we've got. Uh, do you have an example of other PLC brands such as Omron? Um, not not just off off the top of our heads here, but but yeah, our, our products are used with with just about every brand of uh, of PLC. Um, uh, in most cases, if the if they're Modbus compatible or or, or Profibus or Profinet, then uh, we can uh, we can provide a, a unit to uh, to connect uh, directly to that PLC. Um, uh, supports M two M. Well, that that depends. Um, uh, that's an anonymous uh, question. Um, uh, yes, well, of course, it supports M to M, but that depends exactly what, what you mean. Um, the 600 uh, series are, are our lower end uh, routers. Uh, our uh, 900 series routers uh, uh, natively support protocols like MQTT um, and uh, can be pro programmed in Python uh, to talk to Amazon Web Services and and, uh, and, and Microsoft Azure, um, but that's um, that's a different um, product range. Um, we can certainly uh, talk to you about that um, uh, offline. Um, so if you if you contact us, we, we we'll uh, explain to you about the IR and IG nine hundred uh, products. Um, yes, we will share the PowerPoint uh, with anybody who who wants it. Um, um, Class one div two. Um, I don't believe so on the IR six hundred, but I, I will. I will check that. Um, and um, can we connect the PC directly to InConnect, or we need a six one five? Yes. No. The uh, the PC basically um, uh, it, it, in the case of InConnect. Um, the uh, the PC can connect to InConnect just using an internet connection. Uh, with an open VPN client uh, on it that's all you need on the on, on the PC to connect to um, uh, to, to the um, uh, to the InConnect service yeah so I'm getting I'm getting other people asking about MQTT um, uh, the um, as far as I'm aware, the the 600 series doesn't natively support MQTT, but it's it's bigger brother the uh, uh, the IR 900 certainly does. Um, yeah, um, yeah. It seems it seems like a lot of people are, are, are asking about uh, Mobbus to uh, to to uh, to MQTT. Um, so um, is it possible to add a Python app to the router? Um, so again, um, that's not the IR600, that would be the IR900. And yes, absolutely, it's, uh, it's possible um, to, uh, to, to do that. Um, the, you ask how much free memory is available. Um, that, that kind of depends. But 
Um, if you want a lot of free memory, you'd need our IG900 product, the gateway product, because that, that's specifically designed to, uh, uh, to be used a program that has expandable memory uh, by means of memory cards. Okay, I'm getting quite a lot of, uh, quite a lot of uh, questions. Uh, I've just been told here that, uh, that the IR615 is certified with class one diff two. So that's, um, uh, that, that's, uh, uh, that's an update on my, uh, on my previous comment. Okay, um, somebody, Gaurav, asks, is it possible to connect a power meter directly to the router on RS-485 over Modbus serial? Yes, absolutely it is. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's the purpose of the, uh, of the RS-485 uh, uh, connection. Okay, any limitation on connecting field devices on InConnect? Um, no, not, uh, not, not, not really. Um, uh, providing you can uh, uh, connect um, a LAN-based device through a switch or whatever, it doesn't really matter, to the, uh, to the router, um, you, can, uh, you can access it uh, remotely. Okay. See, uh, uh, I see some people are getting their uh, questions answered directly by the uh, by the moderator here. Um, um, uh, is there any subscription required for for in, in connect? Um, so to be clear, uh, Device Manager is our management platform. Um, uh, and we make no charge for that at all. That, that allows you to remotely manage a large fleet of, uh, of devices. InConnect, um, uh, that's a slightly different service. That's the one where we can connect products uh, in the field to, you, to, to, uh, uh, to a, a central point and to each other. Um, there normally is a, is a connection, uh, um, a, a, a subscription fee for that. You certainly need an account, um, but um, currently that's free and, and will be for, I think, the next three months. How many devices can connect over a Modbus serial network? Um, well, um, no, um, no, no real limit uh, on that, up to the limits within the Modbus um, uh, um, protocol itself. Okay. Um, does InConnect support third-party modems? Um, uh, no, uh, I, um, unfortunately, um, uh, it, it's not something you can connect uh, a competitor's device uh, to. Uh, it's a, it's a uh, it is a, um, a proprietary thing of of, of ours. Um, but but all of our um, uh, router type products will connect to InConnect regardless of which level they are. Okay, people are asking whether uh, this video will be available. Yes, absolutely it will. Um, we will uh, we'll make sure that uh, we record this, providing I hit the right button at the end. Um, and uh, we'll provide you with a link to, uh, to, to watch it again. Okay, so I think most people have asked asked the questions there. I hope we've I hope we've answered um, most of them. Um, we would encourage you to uh, uh, to, to contact us uh, after this uh, event. Uh, I'm just sharing uh, on the screen uh, contact details for myself and Zilla. Um, even if you're not in our um, in, in our service area, we'll, we'll make sure that we, we pass that on to the uh, appropriate person uh, internally. Or if you've got a general inquiry, just send it to info at inhandnetworks.com. Um, just a couple of a uh, couple of quick questions that have just just come in just uh, just at the bottom there. Uh, somebody's asking if there's a model that supports 12 to 48 volts DC um, uh, or nine. Yeah, okay. Uh, that again would be the uh, Ion 900 series. I think we're probably going to have to do a webinar on that uh, on that product fairly soon as as well. Um, 
so if you want to go all the way up to 48 volts uh, or minus 48 volts, then um, then you would need the uh, the, the IR900 uh, product. Um, uh, can you directly connect to a device on the LAN side of the 600 through VPN using InConnect, or do you need port forwarding? Um, yeah, the uh, that's the whole that, that's anonymous. Uh, I don't know that it's the same anonymous, um, but um, yes, absolutely. That's 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 the point. You can have multiple LAN side devices uh, on the IR600, um, and. Uh, InConnect takes care of porting those through the uh, through the VPN tunnel to InConnect, and then you remotely connect to InConnect, and it bridges the two together. Uh, port forwarding isn't is isn't needed. It's not that's not uh, uh, not something you need to configure in order to uh, to to make that work. 